What's up, everybody? Joe Simpson. I'm back. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's been a little bit. Um, it's been about three to four weeks since my last video, and my last couple of videos have been kind of eh, lackluster. Haven't been doing much fishing. It's cold out here. Now I have seen a little bit of a change in weather. We're starting to see some of those two and three days out of a week of 60 degree weather in Virginia. So that's a good thing. That's alluding to the fact that that early spring time is just around the corner. And when I'm talking about early spring, I'm talking about that time period where you might have two or three days of 30, but you might get two or three days of 60 or mixed up in there. But the water temps are slowly coming up. The ice is getting off the tops of the waters here in Virginia and it's becoming more likely that we can go catch some fish. What I wanted to go through today, because some of you that might either just be getting into fishing or some of you who might have been fishing and not been very successful in the last couple of springs, try to recalibrate our brains to thinking like the fish. Now the fish are off on their holding spots for the winter time and they're gonna start loosening up and start heading shallow towards the pre-spawn. And when they head shallow for the pre-spawn, they're just looking for places to make beds and whatnot. But in between that time, they're moving across secondary points, inlets, deeper channels into the back cuts. These fish can really vary in depth and water temperature and locations, but we know they're coming up. We know they're gonna start moving in. So we're gonna have a better chance at catching some of these fish. So I think the important thing when you're fishing early spring is to cover water. I don't think it's a good time to be throwing plastic worms and dragging bottom. Um, but, you know, by all means, if you got a nice hot, warm day and you think things are laying up against cover, I mean, always throw a jig, right? What I wanted to walk through today was five or six groups or categories of baits that you should be trying. And this could vary for every person based on what state you're in, what kind of water you're fishing, what your temperatures and your time of year really is doing. So you have to be careful and calibrate yourself a little bit and adjust for what I'm telling you. Cause a guy in Florida will not be doing the things that I'm showing today. They're gonna be at a totally different place in their cycle. Northern South Carolina, all the way up to um, New York is gonna be some variation of the same thing that I'm showing today. And then, you know, the Western guys, they're just, they're just Midwestern guys. I don't even know what they do cause I've never been fishing there. Just kidding. Let's jump right into the first category. Now, I don't throw A rigs a whole lot because I fish a lot of ponds. I'm sure they work. I just don't like to fiddle around with them. Usually I'm in a kayak. I don't like throwing the, the big umbrella rig, but I do throw baits that do the same thing that the umbrella rig does. The umbrella rig basically is a wire system that has five or six different baits. And depending on where you live and what your laws are, you have a certain amount of these baits that have hooks in them, maybe all of them, maybe two out of five, three out of five, whatever but it emulates a little group of swimming fish. Very effective, very good tool to use. What I do if I don't wanna throw an A-rig is I use something that I think is gonna be kinda of similar. So a couple of the attributes of things that are on the A-rig are little flashy spinner blades and swim baits. I like using a swim bait with tiny little gold willow leaf blades. This will give it that flash and spin. And then I put a Kitex swim bait onto like a little white head. And usually I can get the similar or same type of strike swim in this bait like you would an A-Rig. One other color that I like to use a lot in the spring with a swim bait is chartreuse and blue. I really like chartreuse and blue with a little white streak in it. This really represents the shad very nicely in my waterways. I, I get it, it's not the same, but it's it's what I do when I'm thinking, like if I think, hey, an A-Rig will work good here, what do I have in the bag that's similar to an A-Rig? Well, nothing, but I do have the spinner bait with little tiny blades and it might give the fish you know, a look that, hey, there's three or four in a group here. The other time that you wanna use a spinner bait is if you got a little bit of breeze and a little bit of chop on top of the water. For some reason, they just work really good in that condition. The other thing or the other variation, if you, you know, if your friend's throwing an A-Rig and he's getting a lot of bites, you might want to try one of these. These are Kitex swim baits. You can use any kind of swim bait, but this one's without a weight. You could put a bullet weight on to get a different action. This is a weighted swim bait hook, smaller swim bait profile. You can use anything you want. You can even use swim baits um, that look actually like fish. And all of these work really good in the springtime. So that's the A-Rig swim bait spinnerbait category. Let's move to the next one. Not in any particular order, but I'm just grabbing different baits as I go. The other one that works really good in the spring is a glide bait. 
You've seen the S waiver from River to Sea. You've seen other glide baits by other companies. And I've just got a couple that I yanked off the shelf. This is one that I really like. It's a little bit smaller than the S waiver and it has a pink body on it. It swims really nicely. I've had some decent strikes on that one. But the one I really like to throw, especially in the springtime, I really like this bluegill that I got from AliExpress. This thing really has a nice sink rate. It sits straight up and down. It really glides through the water. And I've caught quite a few fish on this silly thing. It's a little bigger than I'm usually comfortable throwing, but when I'm looking for a glide bait, something a little bit bigger, it tends to work really nice for me. And keep in mind these fish, <clears throat> what they're doing before they're going to their beds is they're feeding up a little bit. They've been on this long winter pause. They might have had a meal here and there, but they're not really aggressive. The water's warming up. They're starting to move. They're starting to eat, um, which brings me to the next bait, which is probably my favorite bait for springtime fishing. And I bet Pat and Matt will guess exactly what I'm about to pick up and show you guys. The bladed swim jig or chatterbait, whatever you want to call it. Chatterbait, I think, was the Z-Man name, but people generically say chatterbait like we say Xerox copy or whatever. And we don't even really say that anymore because that was from the 80s and I'm old. But anyway, um, three colors I key in on when I talk chatterbaits. Something that's a little bluegill, you know, could even lean towards craw but I leave enough color variation in there to cover both grounds. Of course, I have a craw trailer on here, but, you know, honestly, fish, I don't know that they know the difference. The classic shad with predominantly white, and then I have that classic blue and yellow in there that we were talking about earlier on the spinnerbait. And, of course, the all-elusive, hard-to-find, used to be anyway, the fire craw chatterbait. This is the jackhammer, and this is in the fire craw color with the nice trailer on it. And this thing is wicked in the springtime. I caught my second largest fish in my entire life on this lure right here. So this will always be in my bag. So these last few baits that I'm going to cover, these really should be used year round. These aren't really limited to the spring, but they should be incorporated into your spring mix. So the first one I'm going to show you, yes, obviously the square bill is a great finder bait. This bait should be thrown shallow, mid-depth, against structure, rocking off the bottom. You can really throw the square bill anywhere. And this is not just limited to the square bill. I'm talking about the crankbait too. I know they're different in the way they're used, but more or less the same in the body and the motion style. So this is definitely gonna be something you wanna incorporate into your bag and you wanna go with the red and then go with the shad color. And then from there, pick the one you like the best. The other one, which is great, and remember the water's still cold. We're talking about the jerk bait. Now the jerk bait can be used year round, but it really shines in cold weather because it can suspend and it pauses. So you get this thing out, you swim it down to depth, you give it a couple jerks, you let it sit for a second. You give it a couple more jerks, you let it sit for a second. A lot of times on that next jerk or that pause, um, you're gonna have that fish either put that thing in its mouth or come after it because it's a reaction bait. So don't forget about the jerk bait, especially in the spring. A lot of people think, oh, dead of winter, cold, cold water, I'm gonna go jerk baiting. Any other time of the year, I put it away. That's not the case. The jerk bait can be effective in hot weather, cold weather, and transitions. So this is definitely a cold to warm transition. So you don't really know when you go fishing if it's gonna be super cold water or warm water. Um, so you wanna have that in your bag as a fallback um, for a little slower fishing style. And for those of you freaking out at home going, when is he gonna talk about this bait? Um, don't panic, I'll never forget. This is probably my favorite go-to bait. If somebody said, Joe, we're gonna go fishing, water temps are gonna be like, 45 to 50 and you can bring one rod one bait and it's going to be fairly clear water you know what do you want to bring i'm bringing a rattle trap when i'm talking rattle trap i'm talking about any wafer thin bait that shimmers through the water and has rattles all these rattle traps have rattles and they have different sounding rattles so you really want to key in on what the fish are doing if they're hitting one versus the other is it because of sound is it because of color same as the other baits, you want to incorporate that red craw color into your spring mix because they really get bit in the spring. Don't know why. I guess it's because fish might be eating crawfish. So a quick summary, what baits do we want to look at? We want to look at chatter baits, glide baits, spinner baits, and umbrella rigs. We want to be using square bills, rattle traps, and jerk baits. 
those are really kind of the mix that I like to use in the springtime. For colors, you want to key in on reds. You want to use some chartreuse in there, and you want to have some shad colors with some blue streak and black streak in there along with the chartreuse. And where do you want to fish these baits? Usually secondary points, transition zones, where these fish will be moving up into the shallows. Now, some of them may move up shallow early, uh, so don't be shy and, and not throw something up against a log or a tree that looks saucy. But, you know, I think really you're going to find these things suspended a little bit still in a little deeper water. I think the key thing about all these baits, you got vibration, flash, and rattle. All of these baits are making noise, they're grabbing attention, and they're grabbing a reaction. So these are all kind of a reactionary type bait. So uh, get out there and run through these and try these different colors and let me know how you guys do. For you guys that are already fishing out there, you know, good for you. And for those of you who haven't been able to get out much, our time's coming. The weather's going to change and we'll be fishing soon. Comments below, like and subscribe. I appreciate all of you and um, glad to be back, man. The swim bait is awesome. The other, the spinner bait is awesome. The other time you want to use a spin, the other time that's really good to use a spinner bait. Slow it down.